Back at 837, and in a moment, we're going to talk to a doctor who says death is reversible. But first, the question, what happens when we die? The tunnel. I was actually standing in utter brilliance. The white light. It was a brilliant light. A profound feeling of comfort. I remember being in that tunnel thinking, oh my God, this is so nice. These have become the hallmarks of a near-death experience, a phenomenon usually reported after an individual has been pronounced clinically dead. They did everything they knew to do to try to resuscitate me that day. I was uh, declared dead on the scene. In 1989, Pastor Don Piper was driving over this bridge in rural Texas when he was broadsided by an 18-wheel truck, leaving him with horrific injuries. I had an enormous gaping wound in my left leg. My arm was separated at the shoulder. It went behind me into the back seat. Piper says he was without a pulse for 90 minutes. It's then, he says, he crossed over to the other side, an explosion of sight and sound. I saw a magnificent gate, for lack of a better description. Each moment becomes more glorious than the moment before. He says his dead grandfather stood at the gate welcoming him home. The whole experience was documented in his best-selling book, 90 Minutes in Heaven. Mary Jo Rapini was working out at the gym when her life changed forever. She suffered a brain aneurysm and was rushed to the hospital. Rapini was in an intensive care unit for three days when she took a turn for the worse. I remember being in this room with lots of activity and physicians. And then I had the experience. It's a tunnel that's radiant. It's, it's so warm and it's so accepting. And God held me. And I remember thinking at the time, I, I have never known love like this. After a miraculous recovery, her near-death experience has given her a renewed sense of purpose, a new reason for being. I have an awareness now that I never had before. Dr. Sam Parnia is one of the world's leading experts on the study of death and these near-death experiences. His new book is called Erasing Death. Dr. Parnia, good morning. It's good to see you. Good morning. Good to Lots be here. Lots to talk about in this book. Let's pick it up right there, though, with these near-death experiences. You well know that you have many colleagues in the scientific community who doubt this. Who they, they say this is basically hallucinations that are brought on by lack of oxygen to the brain. But you're a believer for scientific reasons. Well, the reality of it is, you see, most people, including most doctors and scientists, have a very fixed idea about life and death. They think that life, when you reach the point of death, it's irreversible. But the advances in the last 10 years have shown us that actually it's only after a person dies that they turn into a corpse that their cells, their brain cells, start to die. And although most people think this takes place only in four or five minutes, we now know that actually brain cells are viable for up to eight hours. And this is where you have your claim that, that death is actually reversible, which sounds pretty astonishing. What do you mean by that, though, that this process is long enough that there are methods to reverse it? Absolutely. So we now understand that it's only after a person has turned into a corpse that their cells are undergoing death. And if we therefore manipulate those processes, we can restart the heart and bring a person back to life. So one of the most advanced things that we can use right now is to cool people down. And if we cool them down, we slow that rate. And you mean and cool this, them, but sometimes this literally means putting ice on them. Absolutely. And what this means to us is that death is reversible, and we have to redefine the way we think of death and life. So, for instance, we all probably saw, I'm sure you saw the Titanic. Remember that scene where they find all these 1,500 people who are dead in the water? But what we now know is that those people most of them could be brought back to life again if that had happened today. I am no doctor, obviously, but the first question that comes to my mind is, at what cost do you bring people back, but then they've suffered significant brain damage? Well, one of the problems we have right now is that there are all these advances in our systems but are not being implemented. So your chance of surviving from this depends on where you end up, which hospital you go to, who's on call, which bed you end up at. But what we do know is that if we implement these things, people can come back without brain damage. And that's what we're trying to strive to do, because there are many people who die unnecessarily. And then, unfortunately, they end up, if they do come back, with either brain damage or in a vegetative state. And what's important to realize is that every single one of us, this is the one thing that will affect every single one of us. And if we don't standardize the care, people do. But with cooling and various other things, we prevent brain injury. Back to those near-death experiences for a moment. You, you mentioned that it's something that you believe is possible. As I understand it, you're planning to study this. Tell me about, I, I've heard about one where you want to actually place some things high up in a hospital room to see if that out-of-body experience is real. 
Well, you see, I'm an intensive care physician. My goal is to bring people back to life. That's my aim. But in order to do that, we have to study what happens after death. And an, an inadvertent consequence of this, the flip side of the coin, is that we've learned about what people experience after death. So that's why we know that when people die, their consciousness is not annihilated and that there are these experiences. Yeah. Well, it will be interesting to see the results of that study. Again, if people are interested in a fascinating topic, the book is called Erasing Death. Dr. Sam Parnia, thank you for being with thank us. Thank you for having me.